it's Monday and we are starting unit 13 and this would be week one and we are on eggs. So throughout this unit we are going to be using a lot of plastic eggs so dig them out or order them on Amazon or head off to the dollar store and get yourself a bunch of plastic eggs. We are also going to be talking a lot about different kinds of animals and all kinds of animals that lay eggs since kids and most people for that fact just tend to associate eggs with chickens. As always, we are going to be using practical items that you can find around your home for all of these activities that we do. They're going to be easy prep activities, and if you don't have the exact items that we are using, you will easily find a substitution within your own home. If you've just stumbled upon this video, I'll be sure to link our playlist that starts right at the beginning at week one of unit one. I will also be sure to include the supplies and books that we're gonna use and read throughout this unit in the description below. So let's do this. After you complete your morning circle time or calendar routine, be sure to include the poem and song for this unit, which I will include a screenshot of. Then we're just going to introduce the topic of eggs with this poem and song, and then we're going to get right into today's read aloud, which is called Chickens Aren't the Only One. For our things to talk about today is simply to do a picture walk through this book first, making some predictions with your kiddo on what's going to happen before you do the actual read aloud. Our learning activity today is some pom-pom sorting. So get out those plastic eggs, about 20 or so is suggested in the program. Put a pom-pom in each one, have your kiddo crack them open and then sort the pom-poms by color. So this was a great activity. This is what we started out with today and Nola was very excited to see the pom-poms on the table. So what I did for this one is we have five different sizes of pom-poms. So in each egg, I put a few pom-poms, some the same size, some different sizes. They were all different colors. We chose to go for a sorting by size for this activity and I just started out with that one knowing that Nola was going to want to go back and sort them again she always loves to sort them by color she likes to put them in color families as she calls it so first I asked her to sort them by size and then we went back or she went back and just sorted them a few different ways on her own which of course included color then is when we actually did our read aloud for the day we watched it two times through and it was a really great book lots of new information lots of new language around types of animals and animals that lay eggs. Our easy activity for the day is paint art. So for this activity, you want to get yourself a smaller container, line it with some paper, or just get a shoe box is actually what we used for this one. Squirt a couple of colors of paint, get a couple of plastic eggs, and then have your child shake them around. For this one, I chose to use a old koala crate box that we had because it is a really good closing lid. I knew the box wasn't going to open because she's not going to shake it too gently. I mean, it'll start out that way, but then she's really going to get into it. So what we did is we shook the box around open first so she could see the eggs rolling around, see the action that was happening in there and then we closed the box up gave it a few good shakes and she did this a few times until she deemed that it was done and she didn't want to paint the eggs she wanted to keep them with the paint on so we've just set that aside to let it dry so we can see her artwork when it's finally done the awesome thing about this egg unit at the end of last week we had discovered some robins were trying to build a nest in our little playground so my husband and I kept taking it down because they weren't doing a very good job and then they got serious about it one night and there was a real nest so we decided to leave it there's a nest in our little playhouse. We're gonna see if there's any eggs in there and hopefully the mummy bird doesn't dive bomb us. Oh, there is two little eggs in there. You wanna go have a look? Let's see. You see them? Two little blue eggs. Your very own little nest. What do you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? Mm. Okay, we gotta stay out of here as much as we can so that the mummy comes back, okay? You go that way, I'll go this way. And I knew we had an egg unit coming up soon, though I would have jumped ahead to it if it wasn't the next one. But as always, this program is playing into our daily lives. So with this egg unit, we have a robin's nest built in our playground. And this morning, Nola and I checked as we've been doing all weekend, and there is two little robin's eggs in there. So that's going to be really fun and just so awesome to have this really happening in our own backyard, literally, while we are going throughout this unit of eggs. And that was all for today. Tuesday. So after you do your morning routine along with the poem and song included for this unit, then a review topic is simply going to be a couple of questions such as, are all eggs the same size? Or what kind of animals 
produce eggs. Something along those lines. Then for today's read aloud, you're just going to do a repeat of yesterday's read aloud. And for our things to talk about today, we are going to introduce the letter E. For this, you're going to want to have it written on a chalkboard, whiteboard, whatever you've got in both upper and lower case. Be sure to include a few words beginning with this letter and be sure to go over the sound that it makes. Then you're going to want to go back through today's read aloud and try to find a couple examples of both upper and lower case on just a few pages or just go through the poem and song again for this unit and find your letter E. Our learning activity is going to be a simple post-it hunt. For this, you're going to want to get a bunch of post-its, write some upper and lowercase e's, hide them all over the house, and then have your kiddo go off and find them. For this activity, as we've been doing lately, I've been hiding them in a lot harder places so that we find them throughout the day. And as we find them, we kind of shout out letters that begin, no, we shout out words that begin with the letter e. And this one is pretty difficult, I will say, mainly because the vowels all sound very, very similar. So Nola's just mainly using the words that we did uh, with our review this morning when we first introduced the letter E. And I will also say Colton is loving this game. He loves finding the E's. He shouts every time he finds one and then runs over to the wall and sticks it on our big letter E. For our easy activity is some simple pom-pom counting. So in the program I suggested you get some construction paper, cut it in half and write the numbers one to five on each piece of paper and then do this twice. Then fill some little eggs with pom-poms with these numbers twice as well. So you'll have two eggs of full of three pom-poms, two eggs full of four, two eggs full of five. Um, and if you need to make this a little bit harder, then just raise the quantity uh, of pom-poms and numbers. So what I chose to do for this activity instead was we just got out the playing cards and we did numbers two through ten. So I just randomly filled some eggs with a particular number. I didn't double the numbers as we just went two through ten. I also had the cards just kind of scrambled on the table and she'd crack open an egg, count the number of pom-poms and then find the coordinating card. So she didn't really play this game much more but she had the idea. She was going back, she was stuffing her own eggs, she was cracking them open and counting how many pom-poms there were. She was sorting her eggs. This really kind of played on in its own little way for another good half hour or 45 minutes or so. Then we actually got into the read aloud after we finished the activities. We watched this book again about three times through and this is where we took the time to do our review topic about egg size. So every couple of pages where I found it appropriate we would just pause the book and talk about which animal on the page would have the largest, the smallest and the medium size and I just grabbed three different size pom-poms to give us um, an actual like physical visual of matching up the animal to the size pom-pom uh, pretending they would be the egg and figuring out who would have which size. And that's all for today. Wednesday, so today you start off with your morning routine along with the song and poem that is included with this unit. And then we're going to introduce the book, Guess What's Growing Inside This Egg. So for our things to talk about is to simply do a picture walk through this book first, trying to guess what's going to happen before you do the actual read aloud. We watched this book about three times through and it was actually the last activity we did for the day. We started off with our easy activity, which is egg decorating. So you're at a cut out a few sheets of paper in the shape of an egg. I cut out about half a dozen just knowing my kid and then simply have your kid decorate this egg with whatever you have on hand, whatever they want to do, color, paint, jewels, whatever you've got. We were very, very lucky about a month ago, uh, our Mima dropped off a nice care package. I think it was back in our farm unit when we got this and we had about a dozen jars of eggshells that were dyed different colors amazing and so perfect because our decorating stash is really dwindling these days and I wasn't sure what we were going to decorate these eggs with. So I pulled out these eggshells. I had this beautiful display in the morning and I was so pleased that I thought for sure Nola was going to just dive right into this activity because my presentation, I was just killing it. And she walked right past it and didn't care first thing in the morning, which just again reinstates the fact that your kids don't care how good it looks, how pretty things are, how well you present it. They just want to have fun. So keep that in the back of your mind. It, it doesn't have to look great. It just has to be fun. And oh, did we have fun with these eggshells. And we just slathered on the glue and then put the eggshells on however she wanted to really. I helped her with one or two and then the rest she totally did on her own. But I must say, just playing with the eggshells themselves 
was very therapeutic. We all enjoyed playing with the eggshells many times throughout the day, just from cracking them in between your fingers, the sound that they make when it cracks, the sound that it makes when you sprinkle it back into the container. Very, very uh, enjoyable for all of us, definitely. Then for our learning activity today is egg roll measuring. So get some of those plastic eggs and make some ramps. Tall ramps, short ramps, roll your eggs down and experiment with that a few times and then experiment with filling the eggs with different items, rocks, rice, whatever you can put in there to maybe make them roll faster or slower. Maybe even you want to get a little finish line and see how far you can roll them. Now I will say this was kind of short lived for us. Uh, because Nola just wanted to play with the eggshells and I gotta say that uh, I quite enjoyed playing with the eggshells too so I didn't push it too much but I'm probably gonna see if we can get into that a little later maybe on a nicer day when we can take it outside and use our slide. Thursday. So today after your morning routine ask your child perhaps what color of eggs they have seen. Then for our things to talk about today we are going to revisit the letter E so as always you want to have it written down on a piece of paper, chalkboard, whiteboard, whatever you've got. Include some familiar words beginning with this letter and go over the sound that it makes. Now we are still doing our alphabet hunt I guess I hid them in a little too hard of spots or maybe not depending on how you look at it because they're still finding the E's. It's still keeping the conversation going and uh, it's a good review for this letter as like I mentioned a few days ago the vowels are a little trickier they all kind of sound very similar our learning activity today is making play-doh now that might sound a little bit frightening but really it is super easy it's another sensory play but it's kind of like clean sensory play very simple we used a three ingredient method of one cup of flour half a cup of salt half a cup of water mix that all up I let the kids totally do all of the mixing for the most part we just got out a big bin and put all of our uh, stuff inside of there to kind of contain the little bit of mess that we do have and then let them mix it up. We had to add a little bit more flour so it wasn't quite so sticky but they really enjoyed that and that turned into an hour of sensory play for both of them and Nola continued on with that for another good half an hour totally on her own. Then for our easy activity we are to make play dough eggs. So do as best you can with this. Now our play dough we left it nice and soft. It wasn't really stiff so it didn't it wouldn't hold like a three-dimensional shape. So you want to collect some of your plastic animals or whatever you've got. We had a combination of plastic, magnetic, and even some little fabric animals. You want to make some eggs, put the animals inside, and have them hatch. We included some animals that didn't hatch from eggs and animals that do hatch from eggs. And I secretly collected them and had Nola help me roll out the dough and cut it. And then we just kind of folded them up into the dough. And uh, we brought them over to our little table and we're holding them in our hands, keeping them warm and pretending that they were starting to hatch and revealing what the animal was. We sorted them into two piles of animals that come from eggs and animals that don't come from eggs. It was a really great activity. She really liked it. And this Play-Doh, uh, you know, keep it in an airtight container and it will last you, I don't know how long, pretty long I would assume. If you want to add some color to it, feel free to drop in a couple drops of food coloring and mix it up well. Although I think that probably will transfer onto your kiddo's hands. We chose to just leave ours plain. And that's all for today. It is Friday and we are starting right off with our easy activity, which is hard boiled eggs. Boil yourself some eggs, let them cool, and this takes longer than you think it would. And then crack them open. Yes, you. Let your child peel them, let them slice them, let them eat them. But just a note, keep the eggshells in the fridge because you will need them next week for an activity. So we're going to try two different methods for peeling our eggs. The first one Mama, is just an old, crack. it's cracked a little. We're going to give it a little tap and a little roll and then peel it. So let's get a bowl for our shells. So now remember, we'll use this one. This one's already cracked a little bit. So we're going to tap it, right? Tap it down till you hear the egg crack a little harder. Okay, now put your hand flat and roll it. Push harder. There you go, you hear it cracking? All right, now give it a peel. Hard. Now the second method, we're gonna see. You are supposed to peel about a quarter size amount from the bottom and about a dime size from the top and then blow on the top part and the egg is supposed to shoot right out of its shell. So let's give it a try. 
Okay, so I'm, I'll peel and you blow, okay? Okay. So we're gonna peel off the bottom. Okay, so there's our bottom. And then the top. That's what the weight is mm -hmm. Okay. So there's our top. So you hold the shell. Here, let's put our bowl here. Hold the shell gently. And then blow on the top. Let me see here. All right. Let her rip. Nope, you gotta put it right up against your mouth like this. You want mom to try? Okay. Okay. What the, what the bit of stickiness off my lip? I'm gonna give this method a try. So we have quarter size, dime size. Now hopefully our egg lands on the counter. So you hold the egg like this and then blow. Let's try again. Well, let's ah! see if we can get the rest out. There we go. Hands down, best method for peeling an egg, and it's super fun, right? It works! Nola's gonna try. So hold it maybe for you with two hands. Gentle, no, don't squeeze. You got to gently hold it. Try, blow. No, you gotta put your lips right up against it. Give it another try. Hmm, maybe we'll have to keep practicing. You wanna try and blow, Colton? Blow. All right, mommy's turn, ready? All right, are we gonna slice some eggs? So we've just finished our read aloud for the day and it is entitled Eggs. We've had our eggs, our hard boiled eggs for breakfast, which was really fun trying to blow those eggs out of the shell. That was a good one. I really recommend you try it. So we've watched this book many, many times. I'm not sure. How many times do you think we watched it? Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Ten times. I think that's about accurate and I'm not even quite sure that we are done watching this yet. As always, you are encouraged to do a picture walk through this book first before you go ahead and do the actual read aloud. Okay, so we are just about to start our learning activity now, which is shape cutting with Play-Doh. So what you want to do for this one is have your Play-Doh that we made yesterday set up and grab some tape and tape some shapes on there. And we've also got a couple of cookie cutters here and a bowl and we have a few different tools. Nola has, what do you got? The crinkle cutter roller and then we have just a plastic knife and then we also have our crinkle cutter here. So we're gonna experiment with different ways to like trace and cut out these shapes with our play-doh. This is a really great activity for those gross motor skills. They can practice over and over again and the tape allows them a little bit of play to make some mistakes, not getting the shape perfect. And of course you should not expect perfection with this, uh, especially if this is a new skill. But our Play-Doh, we kept it nice and soft so it was easy to roll out over and over again to practice and practice as much as we wanted. Once we were finished cutting out the outline of shapes, we also took some of our cookie cutters and stuffed it with Play-Doh to find a different way to make Make the shapes. This was a really really great activity. We had a lot of fun today with the eggs, peeling of the eggs earlier and uh, playing with this play-doh. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna last uh, quite a long time and I have noticed with this play-doh you can leave this out a lot longer than store-bought play-doh and it does not dry out. Yesterday we left ours out I'm gonna say for about an hour and a half and it was still nice and soft. We threw it in the bag and it softened up even more after that. So that's it, another fantastic week, another fantastic day as always. We've been having loads of fun playing with our eggs and our Play-Doh. So if you like this video, then please show us and give us a thumbs up. If you think you know somebody else who might enjoy this too, then perhaps share it with them or even consider subscribing. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>